Hello everyone, this is Stevio Sims here playing on Midwest Horizons. So this is our new farming series here on Squad Farms. Right now, we need to get to our harvesters. We got wheat that is ripe and needs to be cutting. So we'll jump into our power stroke forward here. Go down to the field. Love the sound of this truck. Just so realistic. Got the fuel tank hooked up here. I think we are good on fuel, but we'll take it down anyways. Travel over the bridge here. I love the farm path to this field. We also got our 9RT cultivating in some uh, sugar beets and potatoes. We don't have a harvester, so we ended up purchasing them two fields. So we have a few STS combines here, a, a 70 series and a 60 series. Get these combines started. Just one beautiful combine here. So this is our largest field, field 41. I guess I could show you the fields we own here. We have 41, 40, 39, and mostly our farm. If you check out the first video, this is where our farmyard is. We have a few small fields of 40 and 44. We have field 46 and 24. So we have a little over a two million dollar loan. I didn't cheat in any money. This is basically off of the farm manager mode. Started that and we the farm manager mode you get about a little over a million and then with the equipment that was already in game sold that and with the farm build and the field purchases and the equipment we ran over about I think 22.3 million I did forget to I wanted to swap this I don't know where you were planning on going, but it's not very intelligent. We'll get this combine running too. This is our 70 series. It's got a big top on it. Over to the right. Sorry, just gotta make sure. Activated. There we go. This is, uh, I think uh, John JD came out with the 70 series in 2010, and the 60 series was 2007, so a little bit older combines. This one has the bullet rotor in it, so 
used to be back in my day when I was farming. We had all the J John Deere combines were conventional. They didn't have rotors at that time. And nowadays they pretty much all the way changed over to rotors. I believe you can still get a conventional combine from John Deere, but most of them ended up going over to the rotors. So it was uh, Case IH and Gleaners had the rotors, I know. I was in that time, that was the big combines of the day, or the big manufacturers. Uh, of course, uh, New Holland had the rotors too, I believe, after a short while later. So, if you have watched me before, you know I like to play with course play. Primarily because I get to create realistic videos that way. I thought I, yeah. I don't know where he's going because I told him I had pathfinding on. So now he's pathfinding. He's having a hard time. We will jump over here. Sorry, I know I'm changing around, but course play isn't pr playing nicely. There you go, driver. That was better. So this is the custom modding Kenworth here, T800 version and the Pace Setter B trailer, also from custom modding. The combines are from SID modding. So, I really like these combines, older versions, so there's a few. They also made the, seven, the 700 series, S700 series John Deere's. So we will take off again. So I know a lot of farmers don't use semis in their fields due to compaction, but a lot of them do. Uh, let me know if you would like me to use uh, grain carts, which I'd like to do, but it's really hard because you have to basically, it's a full-time job for somebody to run a grain cart. And I mostly play single player. And so that way, or uh, what do they call them, uh, grain wagons, or gravity flow wagons. So I could use them too. A lot of farmers use them in the field. A lot of farmers just use semis in the field. So beautiful looking combine. So this is kind of an odd shaped field. Loops around, kind of makes an L. A few cutouts in it. So if you don't know my playing style, I usually operate with a lot of pieces of equipment at the same time. So that's why I use course play so often. So you, most farms operate, you know, they have multiple uh, chores going on at the same one time, whether it's 
harvesting wheat and planting right behind it or disking right behind it or preparing the field it's all done usually at the same time so especially around planting and harvesting there's a lot of hired help and operations going on at the farm get this guy out of the way Usually, if you don't know course play, when it reads, it has to unload. It's better just to reload it. And then, it takes off. So our 9RT finished disking the field so we'll get him back this is most likely going to be our field work primarily tractor and we'll won the grain cart so this is a 9470 RT one of my favorite tractors just because of the looks of it are just so believable. The plastic, the, the metal appearance, the textures of it, it's just beautiful. Of course it's all dirty and you can't really tell right now. It needs a good washing, but it is one beautiful tractor. Hopefully one day they change the dirt textures to a little bit more realistic look like some of the new mods are, but still a beautiful tractor. We'll get this washed up so it doesn't rust. Looks like our field finisher needs some maintenance. We also need to lime field 40, the field we combine. So we'll run up here and get into our trike spreader. Interrogator. You don't see as many of these trike spreaders around, but back in my day, these were very common, especially for putting uh, dry nitrogen down. Lyman wasn't too prevalent where I grew up. The soil just didn't need it. The pH levels were usually didn't require it. They did require a lot of nitrogen to be put down either by anhydrous or dry spread. So 
So primarily depending on the, the farmer's wishes is either version. So nitrogen is definitely more dangerous than dry fertilizer. It's definitely got, you definitely have to wear protective equipment because it can really do a lot of damage to your skin, to the touch and all that. So that's why a lot of nut farmers went away from using an or nut anhydrous. Sorry, anhydrous is very dangerous. That's why a lot of farmers went away from using anhydrous for their nitrogen intakes. Mm -hmm. Why a lot of Farmers use uh, alternating soybeans and corn too because soybeans actually put some nitrogen into the soil themselves so you don't have to fertilize them the same if you go soybeans, corn, back and forth. We are definitely going to get a lot of bales off this field so we definitely need the money to pay off our big loan so we got to. Looks like we're doing a little, getting as much of the crop as possible. We got a little flooded wheat ground here. I'm surprised the wheat isn't laying over. So we're still working on the outside path headlands of this field. Got a few more. I think this is our last headland. Should have most probably put the bigger hopper combine, the 70 series, in front of this so that way it didn't, it could make it farther and then it could obviously. Most people use the bigger hopper combines to cut through the fields first pass around. So let me know what you would like to see on this series. So my plan is right now is for this series I usually post a let's play then while I'm playing the net let's play I'm actually taping recording for a time lapse. So the time lapse covers about two hours to three hours of farm work. Uh, I cut a lot out of that, the uh, boring stuff basically out of it. So it's more, it flows easier. So, and the let's plays, I sit down and I explain what I'm doing, what the plan is, what's going on on the farm that day. So primarily we're trying to get our wheat harvest right now. So you could either play the Let's Play or watch the Let's Play series or you can watch the time lapse. It doesn't matter to me. Or you can watch both. Uh, they both give different uh, viewpoints of what's going on in the series. So I don't know if we'll end up keeping this uh, interrogator. So I thought this was an updated version. This is uh, undated. I think there's a newer version out there, so probably end up getting that version or trading it in for another spreader. It just doesn't seem like it's working the best. So there's a case one out there that I like using. I'll probably end up trading it in for. Similar to the version, if you watch Welker Farms, it's just a newer version of they changed into the big brute so they made this I believe that was a spreader primarily that they changed into a a sprayer so it had a spreading box on the back and they made a pull type sprayer into a spraying rig
so it's been a while since I used this and since then there's a lot of new mods come out so I don't really like the textures too much on this so is what I call it's kind of has a FS 15 textures and I like the more realistic uh, textures and rubber and plastic looking mods just brings new realism to the game this operator definitely makes some weird turns doesn't he so basically usually I'm running about four to six operators at once but beans we're just starting out uh, we have to clear out some fields and some fields aren't ready yet so I believe we do have some spraying we need to get done jumped in the wrong sprayer so I had two pull types I have one primarily for fertilizer and one primarily for herbicide jump into our 7520 here 20 series John Deere better raise that loader up slightly don't want that to get dug in the dirt pull type sprayers are primarily a thing of the past but I just love the way this looks this row crop edition hardy here fill him up quickly so this is a unique sprayer because it has a turn hitch on it so primarily the turn hitch creates allows the the sprayer to actually travel in the tractor's wheel path so you don't have uh, as much crop destruction going on you see it just click back so see how it clicks over so it actually has a some type of whoa whoa sorry about that that wasn't very realistic That operator is definitely crazy. So it turns it slightly, which can So this needs its last batch of fertilizer on this field. It appears our lime spreader got done too. We might have to extend our loan and actually purchase another lime spreader. So this, oh man, I just barely caught the outside branches. Pretty hard to tell where we're going at. Trying to make sure I get as much of the crop as possible here. This doesn't have a breakable, breakaway boom like most sprayers have boom saver
I believe this is oats. So obviously this oats was planted later. So due to the weather we couldn't get it in, similar to this year. There's definitely a lot of crops going planting in the mud, planted into the mud this year. Fold this up. So beautiful looking Peterbilt here. So we have a Kenwarf and we got a Peterbilt. up taking this driver over to the next combine. unload our 60 series here so it it still has pathfinding on which creates it to go over to the side like that move this guy over We'll park this guy down in our bottom shed here. At least I think we will. And we need to start planting corn. We will get this One thing about this is these things are a little bit hard to back up into into a building because of the the turn activated. So usually have to unactivate that. We got a 24 roll, roll fill up, roll box corn planter here. This is the 1760 John Deere. One of my favorite planters.
get this thing folded out. Usually easier on the planter if you just leave the tractor in neutral. It slightly pulls the tractor back too. Let's drive the tractor back. There we go. And started about right here. got our 30 series John Deere. This is an 83-30 pulling this 24 row 18 or 60 foot planter. This is the row box version the 1770 John Deere. We're also putting a pre-nitrogen down. Definitely, this lime definitely gets the tractor tires white, doesn't it? So this is an older version John Deere doesn't have the downforce, so it can only go about seven miles an hour. It's not the newer version that has the hydraulic downforce, uh, the row cleaners, all the fancy stuff that allows, or the electric row drives that allows for faster speeds and planning. So nowadays planters are getting to upwards of 10 mile an hour in the field, which back in my day was, we usually planted at 5, sometimes 4 mile an hour. So to get good seed depth and spacing, that's what it required, but that was normal for the day. Nowadays farmers are have more land, have bigger operations, and basically the equipment has improved with it to provide them the capability of farming that increased land with less higher help, uh, less operating costs. So these combine operators are definitely using GPS, so keep the distance from each other. Seems like our course play on loading semi is operating better. Most likely just jinxed us, but. Both beautiful combines while they pass in the field. So we're definitely going to get some pretty good yield off of this field. So wheat is yielding good. The prior farmer definitely fertilized it, limed it, and it correctly to provide us this great yield. 
We bought this field in agreement that we would be able to harvest the crop on it. One unfortunate thing in this uh, map is I really tried to load new textures or crops in there. I wanted uh, new soybeans and there's a wheat texture out there that show I think it looks a lot better after harvest. It gives you uh, a better stand, not as spotchy as this, uh, and a corn texture. For whatever reason I couldn't get it loaded to this map which is unfortunate because this is a very to me a realistic feeling American map so I primarily like playing on US field maps where the fields are mostly close together so it seems like uh, giants a lot of times they build maps with the fields far apart uh, yeah, that gives you uh, usually a more beautiful appearance in the map, but it's not realistic. Farmers try to farm every last acre they possibly can because they're trying to make a profit, keep up with their neighbors, and otherwise, because farmers compete with their neighbors too. They have to with prices, the rent on their fields. Most farmers end up not owning all the land they have, so they have to be able to give uh, land owners competitive rent prices. So that's why they farm every last acre or do the best that they can conserve the soil and the land. Looks like our semi just got back, which is good because it appears that we are about full already. Definitely got a lot of straw in this field. Wonder how many bales we're going to get. Definitely going to get a good amount of bales which will be a good amount of income for us. tractor and planter are definitely going to need a good washing. It's weird how one sets of wheels are clean and the others aren't. a shame because this is such a good modded tractor just needs a dirty wheel on that one set of tires over there on the passenger side or the right side duels Here's we have to fertilize our cotton field. So we'll top off this fertilizer sprayer. Head on down.
beautiful highways of Ohio here. So this is this field 24 is actually close to our farm but is on the other side of a stream so it's a distance to drive to it. Got to go around a few tree claims on the highway and a stream. Pull off into the field and unload. I unfold the sprayer. Don't think I got far enough over. I might have just got far enough over. There we go. Got to make sure this is doing something. Spraying the outside. Definitely have to be careful while we're spraying this outside because we're really close to the edge of the trees. Uh, I'll most likely will plant that by the trees into grass because of one, the shade, and uh oh. I didn't make that turn. Oh. Thank goodness for this turning wheel sprayer or turning hitch sprayer, sorry. Got to raise this boom up a little bit because of the terrain on this field. little on level keep that boom from uh, getting into the ground so because of this sprayer has a turning hitch it also has a its own GPS unit which has its own GPS steer which basically means the sprayer is more precise and uh oh hit the tree again so I'm definitely gonna have to look into planting some grass along the edges there so most likely it's a good idea to stay away from the tree edges side because the, the branches fall down you get the shade which you can see from this side of the field crops usually don't do great in the shade Probably have this boom a little bit too high, but the winds are low enough now that we can get away with it. With the train of this field, definitely have to have it. In real life, they have usually ground sensors that will raise and lower the boom. Uh, obviously, this mod doesn't have a ground sensor, so as of FS19 that's a little bit too advanced maybe move it down a little here that would probably be better slightly move it down I think we're getting a pretty bad overlap over there need some boom foamers when we're not in the tractor the oh 
Yep, see, right there, that boom got really close. You just slightly raise it up. So we got, I believe this one field this is planted to cotton, so we do. We are going to get into a little cotton harvesting. Going to raise the boom up again, slightly, going over a low spot in the field, and we'll lower it back down here. We're going to get into some cotton farming. Uh, I know it may not be the most realistic in Ohio, but it's definitely realistic in the U.S. Cotton is a major crop, especially in the southern states. I don't know if they have made hybrid strands of cotton yet to grow in the colder conditions. Looks like we have one more pass here. I raise up the boom again. This is a 160 foot boom, so definitely have to make sure it's not dragging. Which is why it's affected so much by the offset of the terrain. There we go. Better fold this boom up. So, with that folks, we'll end it here. So, we'll continuously be planting our combined fields into corn. The corn planter, we will try, we will be knocking out the, the harvesting on our big field of wheat, getting that harvested because it is ripe and ready. So thanks for watching, and I will see you later.